scripture from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. Ephesus. There isn't a church in Ephesus anymore. Ephesus doesn't exist anymore. It was a Greek city in present day Turkey. And Paul wrote, pray in the spirit at all times with all kinds of prayers, asking for everything you need. To do this, you must always be ready and never give up. Always pray for all God's people. This is the word of God for the people of God. My prayer life is vibrant and it's active daily. I like to commune with God at nighttime. I get under those warm covers and I kiss my wife goodnight. Then I just start talking to God, just me and God, tell him everything. <sighs> Makes me just sleepy just thinking about it. And there I am just laying in bed, laying out my request to him and he's hearing me. And I know that I'm in good company with him. Where was I? The efficiency of one's prayers are directly congruent to the position of one's body. Therefore, the legs should be saying, God, help me. <laughs> Amen. There are times that me and God do not talk, and that is not God's fault, that is mine. I just get so busy. And so when I do end up talking to God, I really just try to impress him, give him a show, to just to show him how much I love him. So excuse me, will you, as I pray to God. Oh, Heavenly Father, oh, Heavenly Father, beseech me not unto thee, how now? Brown cow, oh, thy soul is so dry, and if I can just catch a morsel of who you are, so verily, merrily, down the stream. God, I, I just want to be used by you, God, I want, I want to be salt and light and light and salt and sight and loved and peppers and oregano and pepperoni and blah, blah. When I like to get my prayer on, uh, there's some things I keep in mind. Um, I think it's totally awesome that uh, God is like Santa Claus, and he wants to give you the things that you want. Therefore, you need to keep lists of things. My list currently has 745 prayer requests on them. So then when I go to the Lord in prayer, it looks a little something like this. I'll just pray real quick. Um, let's see. The uno thing on my list is my mom. And so I'll pray for her now. Dear Heavenly Father, I lift up this sweet salt of the earth lady that you have blessed me with to be my mother. And I tell you thank you. And although I know that I'm called to respect her and I give her all due respect, there's also an issue of something she truly needs. And that is to stop a yapping. Lord, she yaps. And she doesn't know how to stop yapping. So could you please make her mute just for a day? Nothing permanent. Don't hurt her. I love her. Just mute her. Take your big God remote and push mute on her channel. That would be great. Henceforth, I would go on and pray all 746 things. God, you are greater than anything this world has to offer. And I can't wait for you to come back and get us. But until that time comes, would you help me just to, just to live my life day after day as if I'm just walking hand in hand with you? God, I, I have a lot of needs. And I have a lot of wants. And sometimes I get those things confused. Help me to just trust you to meet my needs. And be thankful when you give me those other things that I just want. God, I, I've blown it so many times today, and I'm sorry. Thank you for your forgiveness. I don't take it for granted. And God, as I start this day out, I, 
I'm just reminded that this world is filled with so many spiritual potholes. Please help me to walk in such a way where I won't stumble so much. And as I'm going through this day, God, help me to live my life in such a way that would bring you glory and honor. May the life that I live be a life of worship to you. Amen. As I mentioned with the children earlier, church, we're at the halfway point of this series, 40 Days of Prayer. And if you were here the first week, you'll remember we asked the question, do you really want to grow up? And we talked about the importance of not remaining as children, but rather growing up in Christ. Last week, we asked the question, who do you think you're talking to? And we explored the goodness of God and how God's goodness impacts our prayer life. Well, this morning, we're not asking a question, but we are getting extremely practical as we look at how to pray throughout your day. You know, when we look at the life of the Apostle Paul, it becomes clear rather quickly that he prayed all the time. In every book that Paul wrote, he usually starts with a prayer. Oftentimes, he ends with a prayer, and he talks about prayer throughout the body of the book. And he says things like, I'm always praying. I'm continually praying. I'm praying without ceasing. I never stop praying for you. How do you do that? How do you pray without ceasing? How do you pray continually without stopping? How do you pray throughout your day? And that's what we're going to take a look at this morning. One way to pray throughout your day is to keep a running conversation with God. You just talk to God like I'm talking to you right now, like you talk to anyone else. You don't end the prayer. You don't say, in Jesus' name, amen. You, you just keep the conversation going. If something comes up, you talk to God about it. Maybe a minute or two goes by, and then you talk about something else. It's like breathing. You don't think about breathing. You just do it. Prayer is spiritual breathing. Prayer is to the soul what breathing is to your body, and it needs to become just as natural so you don't even Think about it. How many of us here talk to ourselves every now and then? It's okay to, to admit that. Be honest. I know that I do that from time to time. And if someone ever catches you talking to yourself and they ask you why you're doing it, you can tell them, because sometimes I need an expert opinion. You can just, <laughs> just lead with that. But what I have found is that it's easy to make the switch from talking to myself to talking to God. So you're driving in the car. You talk to God. You're shopping in the grocery store. You talk to God. I do that a lot. I pray to God a lot in the grocery store. I don't know about you. I'm, Lord, please help me find this cereal before things get ugly. I like to feel like Moses in the grocery store. Lord, please part these carts so I can get down this aisle. I do a lot of praying in the grocery store. You're out on a walk. You talk to God. Now, in our verse that Marvin read, Ephesians 6, 18, it says to pray on every occasion. Pray at all times as the Spirit leads. Now, On every occasion, that means that we can talk to God anywhere, anytime, about anything. And and I don't know about you, but I know that if I don't feel like praying, it means that I'm not praying what I feel. Let that sink in for a second and let me repeat it. If I don't feel like praying, it means that I am not praying what I feel. And what I mean by that is sometimes we get it in our heads that God only wants to hear certain things from us. And when we start thinking that, you know, God wants to hear only certain things, we may not feel like praying that certain thing that day because of whatever situation we're going through. But what I would say is that God wants to hear from you. God is interested in what's going on in your life, whatever that may be. God cares about what you care about. So keep a running conversation with God. Now, another way to pray throughout your day, and the primary method we're going to talk about this morning, is to schedule prayer times throughout your day. And that is not a new idea, church. That has been around since the beginning of faith history. People have been scheduling or planning times of prayer. And when that really became common practice was during the rule of the Roman Empire. When the Romans would conquer place after place, one thing they would always do was build a forum in every major city. And in that forum, they would build a bell tower. And the bell in that tower would ring six to seven times a day in increments of three hours. And it was a way of telling people what it was time to do. And so that first bell meant that it was time to get to work. 
The second bell meant that you'd been working for three hours. The third bell meant that it was time for lunch and so on. How does a three-hour lunch break sound? Not too bad, right? That's how it went, increments of three. Well, what ended up happening was Jews and Christians started using the Romans' bells as times of prayer. Whenever they would hear those bells, they developed a habit of making sure that they were praying. And so what happened over the centuries is that eventually became known as the Liturgy of the Hours. And even today, the Catholic Church has the Liturgy of the Hours and still uses the terms handed down by the Romans. Now, what's interesting is that over the years, monks who were in monasteries started putting bells in the monasteries, and they did that to signal that it was time to pray. But even way back in the 1400s, the monks started thinking, you know what, this is a bad deal for the guy that has to keep ringing the bell. So they created mechanical instruments that would ring the bells on schedule. The Latin word for bell is, wait for it, clock. Clocks were invented to make time for prayer. It's the whole reason we have clocks. I didn't know that. I don't know if you knew that or, or not, but I found that out while researching this. We have clocks because of prayer. Now, in Psalm 119, verse 164, if you heard that correctly, it is a long psalm. David says, seven times a day, I praise you for your righteous ordinances. And so you get that seven times. That was a number he was praying in that day. And again, as we talked about earlier, the liturgy of the hours became developed as a way of doing that. But here's what I would tell you, church, it's complicated. The liturgy of the hours, it's several volumes. It's thousands upon thousands of pages. So what I want to share with you today is something that is far less complicated. And it's something that Pastor Rick Warren has developed in his own prayer life. And it's based off the seven phrases of the Lord's Prayer. And so like the previous weeks, I want to encourage you to write these down. Put them in your prayer workbook. Put them on a piece of paper. Put them into your phone. Just have them easily and readily accessible. And you will see in parentheses on these slides the phrase of the Lord's Prayer that is there. And you don't necessarily need to capture that. You're certainly welcome to, obviously. But it's more so the instruction beforehand that you're looking to capture this morning. So are you ready, church? All right. Number one, get up with gratitude. Get up with gratitude. Now, we have a choice as to what attitude we're going to wake up with in the morning. And I can tell which of you are morning people because you're smiling at me right now, and those of you who are not are glaring at me right now. But get up with gratitude. One of the cool things I saw is studies show, some doctors and psychologists did this study, that says within the first eight minutes that you are awake in the day, your attitude for that day is already set. So within the first eight minutes, or somebody say, uh-oh. <laughs> within that first eight minutes, and so gratitude helps us to focus on the loving God that we talked about last week. You know, when we can start our day by focusing on the goodness of God, we will inevitably be grateful. Now, if you're a list person, you can keep a gratitude list by your bedside or if you're someone who likes to write. And there, if you have a prayer workbook, I believe it's page 178, there's a template that you can use as a gratitude list. Now, if you're like me and you're not a list person, you can still begin your day by naming several things that you're grateful to God for in your life. But get up with gratitude. Number two, bless God's name at breakfast. Bless God's name at breakfast. And if you're not a breakfast person, you can change that to bless God's name first thing in the morning. But bless God's name. What does it mean to bless? Well, it means to honor. It means to give respect. It means to praise God. The theological word here, sisters and brothers, is adoration. We adore God. Amen. Now, did you know in the Bible God has almost 100 different names in Hebrew and Greek? 100. Why so many names? Well, because each one of those names represents a, a title, and it's a character quality of God. So when we say creator, redeemer, sustainer, prince of peace, mighty counselor, all of those are ways for us to adore and bless God's name. This doesn't have to be a long prayer, but what it does, church, is it highlights the close relationship that you have with God, because that's what it is to know one another's names. Number three, at mid-morning, remember what matters most. 
At mid-morning, remember what matters most. At this point in the day, it can get easier to lose focus of what matters most because you and I are having to deal with the details of everyday life. Because of that, it's important for us to take just a moment, just a second to pause and align ourselves with God's plan and purpose for our life. Now, what does that look like? What does it mean? It is something as simple, again, as taking a moment and praying something like this. God, I want to remind myself that there's something way bigger going on than just what I've got on my plate to take care of today. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. God, I know you've got a big plan. You've got a big plan for the world, but you've also got a big plan for me. And here now, I recommit myself to your plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Something as simple, something as short as that as we go ahead and remember what matters most. Now, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus says this. Jesus says, but strive first. And that word first, highlight that, underline it, circle it. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus was saying this to his disciples and the people listening in the Sermon on the Mount to let them know and to let us know that our agenda, our wants and needs must come after God's agenda. The first thing we need to do is is put God, put God's agenda first. And we do that as we remember what matters most. Number four, church, list my needs at lunch. List my needs at lunch. Lunchtime is a good time for us to talk to God about our needs. You began the day with gratitude. You blessed God's name at at breakfast or first thing in the morning. Then you committed yourself once again to God's plan and purpose for your life. Now it's time to list those needs because as Jesus promises, as we seek first the kingdom of God, all those things fall into line for us. And our God is a God of provision. And so God asks, what do you need? Maybe at lunchtime we're eating a sandwich and it reminds us of this fourth phrase in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. But bread in this case isn't just food. It's everything we need. Bread isn't just bread. It's anything you need in your life specifically for that day. Because notice we don't say give us this day our weekly bread, our monthly bread, our yearly bread. We say give us this day our daily bread. Bread. It is a reminder to us that we need to depend on God for everything we need each and every day. List my needs at lunch. Number five, ask for forgiveness in the afternoon. Ask for forgiveness in the afternoon. Now, if you're like me, you might have to do that a little bit earlier in the day, but it's still a good practice to do nonetheless. Now, when I confess something, church, what what am I doing? I'm I'm owning up to my wrong actions and reactions, right? I'm admitting my sins. I'm admitting how and when I messed up. Now, while I'm doing that, it's also important for me to go ahead and forgive anyone and everyone else who has sinned against me because I don't want to be carrying around or holding on to any grudges. That's going to hurt me more than the other person if I'm carrying around that resentment. So it's critical for us to ask for forgiveness for our sins, to admit those sins, ask for forgiveness and forgive others. Ask for forgiveness in the afternoon. Number six, ask God to help me make wise decisions. You know, studies show that 90% of all arguments in the world, that's not just in the United States, in the world, happen one hour before dinner. 90%. Now, that happens because by that point in the day, we're tired, right? We're worn down, we're cranky, we're often frustrated, and we're carrying around the baggage of our day with us. And the temptation is to take all of that home or wherever we're going and then unload it on those closest to us, right? That's the temptation. And so Rick Warren tells this story early on in his ministry. What he did is he was at an antique store. He found this old milk can, he painted it blue, and he put it by his front door. He called it his worry and problem can. And so every time that he comes home, he will stop there and he'll put his hand out and he'll pray. He'll say, Lord, you know all of my problems. Half of them aren't even solved yet, but I'm not taking them inside. I'm dumping them right here and giving them to you. 
And he does that because he doesn't want to be tempted to go inside and take out all of his frustrations, all of his problems on his family. It's a way of making a wise decision. So ask God to help me make wise decisions. Last one, church, number seven. In my day with an encouraging truth. In my day with an encouraging truth. Now, what do we call that in worship? If we're at the end of worship, it's the what? Benediction is the formal term. Yeah, either words of sin and forth, benediction. And one way we can do this in our lives is to read some scripture promises. You know, read some promises from God. End your day that way. Or you can end it with this seventh phrase here that's encouraging as well. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. End my day with an encouraging truth. Now, look, I I know, church, praying seven times a day can seem like a lot. But we're not talking 20 minutes each time. We're talking a minute here, a minute there, five minutes if you've got it. It doesn't have to be long. But I want to challenge and encourage you this week to try praying using this format. Just give it a try. And the main thing for you to remember is this. God wants to hear from you. God wants to hear from you because God loves you. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen.